And um, are we gonna start now? All right, you're hearing this right now on live stream. So everybody say hi to everybody out there on live stream. Hello to the live stream people. And I just want to thank Dick for, you don't even know the amazing amount of work this man has put into this event. Hours and hours of his time. And, and he's put out these, these beautiful programs for everybody. He goes above and beyond. He's in really in the spirit of fellows tonight. So here's, here's Vic. Thank you so much. Yeah, I haven't read too many hats today. Um, so, uh, I've never done that live stream before. I apologize to the live stream audience uh, if it's not coming off cross. Because I was going to use these mics up front because I know they're better than a webcam mic. So that explains what my problem is there. But apparently they do hear us, but they have to hear some little red cream mic. So I'm sorry about that. The show must go on, right? Yeah. We've got a great crowd here tonight, a great lineup of people that have donated their musical talent to celebrate Phil Oak's 75th birthday, what would have been the 75th birthday. Now a lot of people can't get past the fact that Phil committed suicide. And uh, people that commit suicide, we know nowadays that people that threaten to do it, they actually do commit suicide. So you, you have to take that seriously. Um, I, I was assigned by Broadside Magazine to uh, do Phil Oak's FBI files. Gordon Friesen and Sis Cunningham had a Broadside Magazine for about 20, 25 years out of New York City. And I was a subscriber, and I got to know them when I wrote the song called Broadside Down Here About Phil, and I sent it and actually published my song. It's cool. There's people in this room that got published in Broadside. I think Marcy had first heard of you in Broadside. And uh, one thing Gordon said to me was uh, go out and meet Sunny Oaks, Phil's sister, and ask her. He, he died there. Does she think there was anything strange going on? That where somebody could have got to him or something like that. And uh, she said, no, we were only out for a few minutes, but he was in a really low state. He wouldn't go out of the house for a couple of weeks. He stayed there. And so uh, she she felt that there was no kind of uh, messing with him or anything like he, that he was killed or something like that. She felt like he really did commit suicide. And I've had a few exchanges with people over uh, the organizing of this who've asked me about that, and so I thought I'd say something about it. Um, one thing Gordon Friesen did say, though, is that Phil always had a place to stay in the city. He could go to their apartment, and there was a room that they could, they would always put him up. And he said that there was a Chilean guy that was down in the village that was always buying him drinks. And Phil, had traveled to South America and actually met with the Harlem and singers like that, sang to the copper miners, and was very much affected when the coup happened. I interviewed Phil Oaks in 1973 in May. So the coup was September 11, 73. So when he, when he came back, he was talking about Watergate, he was talking about uh, Nixon should resign, and he was talking about all of those characters that are involved in the Watergate scandal. And about his travels in South America. That video is up online now. You can watch it at Vimeo. Well, that was an audio that was the real, the real. And I found it and said to my friends, Can you digitalize this to see if there's anything on there? They were very pleased that it was fine. And then I said, Maybe people will pay attention to this if I made a video out of it. So in 2015, in August, I made a video and it's pretty popular. It's getting a lot more response than the audio, which I gave to a, a, a group called No. MoreSongs.com. You should check out NoMoreSongs.com. That is the Phillips memorabilia and uh, uh, tribute site. And uh, Paul Middleton runs it. And there's all kinds of free stuff there. I went up there one time and got John Lennon playing a slide guitar with Phillips. I guess they recorded at John's house or someplace. I'm not sure what it was. It was in a hotel, okay? So there's people here that know things and we can all piece it together. 
that, that's Carl, who's uh, going to be one of our MCs, and, and uh, Howie will be back up and see some more. I'm going to do the first few people. So how about we get the show on the road? And we start with our first person. It's going to be Tom Slackman, uh, a master of the banjo. For the past 40 years, he's been working on that banjo. So you better hear that. <laughs> He says he was out here, and I feel like to put the highway dance music it was an epiphany to my ears. It was an ear epiphany. An ear epiphany. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, and he's very active with the San Francisco Folk Club and the traditional Irish uh, music scene. So let's have a big hand for Tom Stecken. <laughs> Come at noon, 
But I'll be the tiny sunset before the light of you. When the rose tips in this ribbon, you will learn the old red country came on to me. And George's men came marching. The old red country came marching.
course. Donald. But then, but then the bed started to shake and the windows rattled. So I said, please, Lord, Lord, tell me what I gotta do. And God said, you know, I went down to the movies, I saw the new Star Wars flick, and uh, it was a complete disaster. And I said, somebody's got to do something about Christianity. So he left with a puff of smoke. He was gone. And I woke up this morning, had a couple of drinks, <laughs> and started to think about what I should do about Christianity. So, um, you know, here I am. I'm just that, you know, amateur. Um, uh, recreational, you know, folk, folk singer, and um, I really don't know what to, uh, uh, you know, do. I mean, I could just sing Phil Oak's great uh, song, Canons of Christianity. So that's what I think I'll do. Say the canons 
don't be afraid. Try to say for one more praise. So young, so strong, so ready for war. So willing, so and die upon the far shore. All march together, everybody looks the same. Then there is no one you can name. Don't be ashamed. Write the claim for one more grave. Listen to the thunder and listen to the noise. Listen to the sound of a marching voice. A few years ago, their guns were only toys. Here comes the big array. Don't be afraid. Try to pay for one more grace. So young, so strong, so ready for the war. So willing to go and die upon the far shore. All march together, everybody looks the same. And there is no one you can name. Don't be ashamed. Try to claim for one more grace. Medals on their coats and guns in their hands. Trained to kill as they are trained to stand. Ten thousand years need only one command. Here comes the big parade. Don't be afraid. Try to stay for one more grave. So young, so strong, so ready for war. So willing to go and dive on the far shore. All march together, everybody looks the same. And there is no one you can play. Don't be ashamed. Christ is made for one more grave. Chestnut, like you know, the national anthem or uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy. 
I still think it should. I mean, I think it is, it's just a beautiful patriotic song. It's called The Power and the Glory. If you know the chorus and you want to sing along, you're welcome to. <coughs> With me through the green and growing land, walk through the mountains and the meadows and the sand, walk through the rivers and the valleys and the plains, walk through the sun and walk through the rain. Here is a land full of power and glory. Many words can be our power will rest on the strength of freedom. Our glory will rest on the law. California, Arizona, and the Carolinas too. In your Alaska, the old and the new. Texas and Ohio and the California shores. Tell me who could ask for more. There is a land full of power and glory. Do the words not recall. Our power shall rest on the strength of freedom. Our glory will rest on the She's only as rich as the poorest of the poor. Only as free as a padlock prison door. Only as strong as our love for this land. Only as tall as we stand. Here is a land full of power and glory.
tests for indolence. <laughs> <laughs> they said, now nah, we dropped the test on part of your cover team. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. Um, actually, I have a tongue of song sitting down, so let's see how it works. I may stand up halfway through. Um, Doug, can you give me a beat? <laughs> Well, pilots playing poker in the cockpit of the plane. The casualties are rising like the falling of the rain. And the mountain of machinery will fall before a man when your white boots marching in a yellow van. It's written in the it's written in the ashes of the villages we burn. It's written in the empty beds of fathers on return. And the chocolate in the children's eyes will never understand when your white boots marching in a yellow land. Go blow them from the villages and burn them from your sight. Tie their hands behind their backs and question through the night. But when the firing squad is ready, they'll be spitting where they stand. At the white boots marching in a yellow van. Red below the bugles of the dawn. The morning has arrived, you must be gone. And the lost patrol chased its tattered soul. Like old horse following tired armies. Train them well, the men who will be fighting by your side, and never turn your back if the battle turns a tide. Cause the color of a civil war is louder than command when your white boots marching in a yellow man. The comic and the beauty queen are dancing on the stage. Raw recruits are lining up like coffins in a cage. Yes, we're fighting in a civil war. We lost the it began with a white boots marching in a yellow land. Red low the bugles of the dawn. The morning has arrived, you must be gone. And the lost patrol chased its tattered soul. Like old horse following tired armies. The thing I like about Phil Oates is he didn't pull his punches. Doug, you want to help me? Want a stool or a chair? A chair spot. I have no excuse for using a chair. Be <laughs> <laughs> tall. He thinks it makes him look better. <laughs> so uh, last month uh, we performed uh, in Oakland for the 100th anniversary of uh, the execution of Joe Hill. And we did this song, which I love, and which uh, tells a complete story. And it's been so, I think Phil Oates was so in the Joe Hill tradition for this one in that he lifted the melody, which was a Joe Hill trait. And um, um, he told the, told the history, and he rallied people with it. So, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> I've been forced work to do, and the statue of liberty with your mind. 
Now Joel comes sailing through Joel. Joel comes sailing through. Oh, and well, his clothes were coarse and his holes were high. And he headed for the promised land. And it took a few weeks on the outer streets before he began to understand. Yeah, before he began to understand. Then Joe got high by Bowery Law, the leaning up the saloon. As the ragwood sailed on the barroom rail, you could almost hear him whistle out a tune. Yeah, you could almost hear him whistle out a tune. And Joe, he went from job to job. From the docks to the railroad line, and no matter how hungry the hand would battle, in his letters he was always doing fine. In his letters he was always doing fine. Now the years went by like the sun going down. Slowly turned the page. When Joe looked back and sweat upon his tracks, he had nothing to show but his age. He had nothing to show but his age. So Joe struck out for the California shores. Things there were just as bad. He joined the industrial workers of the world, but the union was the only friend he had. Yeah, the union was the only friend he had. Now the strikes were bloody, the strikes were black, as hard as they were long. With a pencil in the night, Joe would stay awake and write. In the morning he would raise them with a song. In the morning he would raise them with a song. And he wrote his songs to the tunes of the day. To be passed along the year and the year and by. And the songs were spread and the strikes were lit. And Joe here was always on the line. Yeah, Joe here was always on the line. Yeah, in Salt Lake City, a murder was made. There was hardly a clue to find. Though the facts weren't clear, the sheriff was sure that Joe was the killer of the crime. Well, Joe was the killer of the crime. And now he raised his hand, but they shot him down. He had only his guilt to give. It's a doctor I need, and they left him their bleed. But he made it cause he had the will to live. He made it cause he had the will to live. Now they took Joe into a building of wood, and there the killer would be named. And the days weighed more than a full copper ore, as he found out that he was being framed. He is he found out that he was being framed. Now, Joe. There's enough verses so you can find anybody. It's not justice. No strange are the ways of Western law. And strange are the ways of faith. For the government crawled to the mine owner's call, and the judge was pointed by the sea. Yeah, the judge was pointed by the sea. Now you call justice and be had, but not for a union man. And Joe was warned that one earthly morn there'd be one less singer in the land. Yeah, there'd be one less singer in the land.
now William Spry was Governor Spry. Life was his to hold on the last and menial bell, Governor's dear. May the Lord have mercy on his soul. May the Lord have mercy on his soul. Even President Wilson held up to date, but even he would fail. For nobody heard the soul searching words of a soul in the Salt Lake City Jail. Of the soul in Salt Lake City Jail. Now, in 23 years, Joe lived out his life. He more than played his part. For the songs that he made, he was carefully made with a rifle bullet buried in his heart. Oh, with a rifle bullet buried in his heart. Hey, yeah, they lined Joe Hill up against the wall. A blindfold over his eyes. The whole life of the rebel that he chose to live. The death of the rebel that he died. Yes, the death of the rebel that he died. Now, some say Joe was guilty as charged. Some said he was indeed there. Truth of the matter will never be known. But the court records all disappear. Now the court records all disappear. So wherever you go in this fair land, in every union hall, the words of Joe Hill will be living there still, in between all the cracks in the walls. In between all the cracks in the walls. Well, it's the very last word that Joe Hill wrote when he knew that his days were through. Here is my last and final will, with love to all of you. With love to all of you. When I was a kid, I asked my mom what acapella meant. She said that means we can't afford music lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you know still of that's great. So coming up uh, now we're gonna have uh Callie with some accompaniment, right? Well, me, John, and Ronnie. Three people are gonna be up on the stage and we'll figure out how to set that up. Uh you can stay back here, they will take care of that. So we got Callie Hammer, who's one of the event team organizers for this. Hey. And um uh, She's with John, John Koch and Ronnie yeah. Hunter, and they're going to be performing uh, songs that they've uh, done quite a lot. And uh, one we've done quite a lot. One we've done quite a lot. <laughs> they're very active with the Song Network. Now they're retired, but she's thinner than ever. How about that? So let's bring these guys up. changes which uh, we haven't done a lot and there but for fortune which we've been actually doing for several years. This is John Cook and Ronnie London. We didn't decide what to do first. So. I saw Phil Oaks, I went to Queens College in New York, and I saw Phil Oaks uh, performing probably right around 66. And uh, he came out and he said, well, I just learned how to finger pick this song, so bear with me, and he played Changes. And I tried to find out exactly when that was written, 
When I looked online, it said that Gordon Lightfoot had recorded it before Phil and that it was written in 64, but that didn't make any sense really to what I had. And then Jimmy Kelly said that uh, he had the copyright date of 66, which would fit in with what he did, although he may have just not played it a lot and learned how to finger pick it very slowly. So anyway, this is changes. Well, it's 
Can I look at um, the book and written it some 50 plus, many pluses, I think, years ago? He, uh, he would have written it this morning so he could sing it tonight at his uh, birthday celebration. And I know most of you know it, so sing along. <laughs> Show me a prison, show me a jail, show me a prisoner who stays as on pain, and I'll show you a young man with so many reasons why there fortune. May go you you or I. Show me the avenue. Show me the train. Show me all the road. He sleeps out and I'll show you a young man with so many reasons why there's a fortune to go you or I, you or I. Show me the whiskey stains on the floor. Show me the drunken man and he's gone out of the door. And I'll show you a young man with so many reasons why. May go you or I, you or I. Show me the country where all tattoos fall. Show me the ruins of buildings once so small, and I'll show you a young man with so many reasons why a fortune may go you to your eyes. You are There's a place in this world you still belong. 
how you were wrong. Because we used to teach the right from the wrong. And we still hear you singing all your songs, Glory to God, because you sure did not want to still hear. Though you can't feel the flowing of the time when you're born, all the pleasures of love are not thine. Your pen still expires, lyric rhymes when you're gone, because you sure did not. I'm still here, and you don't breathe the brandy air when you're gone, and you can't even worry about your cares. You've already done more than your share when you're gone, because you sure did it know I'm still here, and you're not running from the rain when you're gone, and you can't even suffer. From the pain when you're gone. But you're still saying who's the praise and blame when you're gone. Because your righteous songs are still here. <coughs> you won't see the golden of the sun when you're gone. And the evenings and the mornings are one when you're gone. You're still singing louder than the guns when you're gone. Because you sure did it know I'm still here. All your days are not dances of delight when you're gone. And the sands are shifting from your sight when you're gone. But your name is still in the fight when you're gone. Because you really nailed it while I'm still here. <laughs> next song was not written by Phil, but he inspired me to write it. Uh, if he was alive today, he certainly would be addressing some of the main social issues, uh, one of which is 9-11, probably the most uh, significant historical, historical event potentially in this century. If he was alive, he might have something to say about 9-11. And uh, so I wrote a song about 9-11. I'll tell you a story of Larry Silverstein, who owned a Wall Trade Tower, one of the smithereens before the hit found to pay five hundred million dollars to remove asbestos from the World Trade Towers. Wasn't it ironic? Wasn't it sublime? Down came the towers in the nick of time. Insurance paid to Larry six billion bucks. Asbestos killed responders now that really sucks. Building 7 is a clue of illicit gain. Coming down at free fall speed and not hit by a plane. Wasn't it ironic? Wasn't it sublime? Down came the towers in the nick of time. Before 9-11 in Washington too. Lots of money missing is another clue. Management and budget told the Pentagon account for two trillion of their money gone. It smelled very fishy. It smelled very rotten. Before 9-11, money will be gotten. Nobody said where the money went. It was not in the bank, it wasn't even spent. Two trillion dollars into thin air. Does anybody know? Does anybody care? It smelled very fishy. It smelled very rotten. Before 9 11, money will be gotten. Army records sent 
for investigation to the Pentagon's west side location. It is east side office where all the big brass meet. Donald Rumsfeld was the boss, feeling lots of heat. Was it ironic or was it disgrace? Something hit the Pentagon in perfect time and place. Lucky Rumsy, lucky Larry, one September day had financial troubles quickly blown away. Who wants to know? Who wants to care? Follow the money to this lucky pair. Was it ironic or was it disgrace? Something hit the Pentagon in perfect time and place. All complicit persons got money and promotions. All whistleblowers got fired or demotions. We got an endless wars for oil, bringing on fascism. Did Larry say put or control demolition? It sounds like treason. It sounds like very rotten on 9 11. Money ill begotten. It sounds like treason. It sounds very rotten. Lots of hush money apparently forgotten. <laughs> There you go, Richard Oates. Very talented lyricist. What are you going to do with Hallie Hammer? Hello again, everybody. Okay, so the next person up is Marcy Boyd. And uh, before I read this, I, I need to tell you, I got an email from Dave Lipman a while back, and he said, Marcy Boyd is coming to Berkeley, you need to meet her. And he sent me her email, and she sent, he sent her mine, and she came over for a cup of tea, and we've been great friends since, and she's now also a member of one of the um, charter, <laughs> I don't know what we call it, member of Acapella. Um, so now I'll read what she has here. Marcy Boyd is the author of numerous songs, including Celibacy, Woman in Her Prime, and The Indecision Poker. She sings with acapella, the La Pena Chorus, and the Bells of Hoboken. She went to a Phillips concert when she was 16 and has been a fan ever since. She has performed in a number of Phillips nights organized by Phillips' sister, Sunny Oaks. Marcy Boyd. Doing one song, and I found out today I thought I could do more than one. So um, I looked through the list of songs that no one had played, and uh, and then Dick told me about a song that I didn't even know existed, and it's by uh, Billy Bragg. And uh, since Joe Hill was a notorious stealer of songs, I think it was appropriate to sing a song that Billy Bragg uh, wrote to the music of a song uh, about Joe Hill, written by. Who wrote the famous song? Uh, Pearl Robinson. Pearl Robinson. So, uh, here we go. I handed that head up to the office and I handed them out to a few people. So, if you have the copy or if you know the song, it's so well. And it has a repeating last line on each, on each verse. Please join me on this. I dreamed I saw pillows last night, a lie as you and me. Oh, 
So he's going to stay up here. And Scott Weaver is going to come join him. Now, in the program, it says Jeff Weaver. Jeff Weaver, I believe, is the campaign manager for Bernie Sanders. But he, is not, he is not here tonight. Marcy, unplugged. Marcy. So we have Doug Norman and Scott Weaver. So as a young man, Doug Norman worked hard to follow his views of impersonating Elvis impersonating. Played local kitchen, living rooms, and mostly shower stalls. But after many hard years of trying to support a family and a bad soccer coaching habit on a song affair and inevitably an Elvis thrown hip, Doug's dreams aged with him. His new icon and inspiration is Lucinda Williams, and his dream is to get the world singing her song, Joy, in, gl song. in glorious, full-throated harmony. Doug hosts a monthly song circuit area for similarly disoriented, yet harmonious, baby boomer malcontents known as Song Note. He also, I can't try to use your name right He's also something with Sweetgrass and oh, no, no, no. performs with Sweetgrass, which is an Americana chord song. And he's a former tenor in the Bay Area Labor Chorus. It's Scott! <clears throat> Sing the song and forget about the aim. 
He wrote them for a reason, why not sing them for the same? And now he's found for the glory of his own. And now he's found for glory. And now he's found for the glory of his own. And now he's found for glory. Inspired by uh, Richard III, who was an English king back in the late 1400s and lost in the uh, War of the Roses. And uh, he's famous for the, the phrase, My kingdom for a horse. A horse, a horse, a horse, a horse. And 500 years later, uh, Bill Oaks decided that he was going to use that uh, expression somewhat in uh, the next one. I saw this on YouTube and he was wearing old lemmies. <laughs> I don't know if that had anything to do with this, but there you go. Let's see. My shirt sees a rose, my Colt 45 is cold, I go fast, turn I'm going faster. Look how far we've come, look how far. A car, a car, my kingdom for a car. How I love the highway. Mix the up and paint the tea wherever I breathe. I race through the trees, bring space to its knees. I am master of all that life has me. Look how far we've come, look how far. It got, it got my kingdom for a car. Look how far we've come, look how far. Take God, take God, my kingdom for a car. Take me to tomorrow, let me go on praise with the wind in my hair. There's smoke in the air, but I do not care if you want me, you will have to. Me. Look how far we've come, look how far. Take God, take God, my kingdom for a car. Come with me, baby, we will have this power was not me for man. We'll find a new land, but the traffic is ten. I will fall. It's a time for walking. Look how far we come, look how far. Take up, take up, my kingdom for a car. Take up, take up, my kingdom for a car. Take up, take up, my kingdom for a car. organizers and will be your MC later. He's from San Francisco. 
And Carl has been an acolyte of Phil Oak since the day after Phil died, when a savvy, tearful high school social studies teacher played the Phil Oaks in concert record in class. Most recently, Carl could be found vociferating against the advancing vaccinal democracy at anti-SB 277 rallies from the steps of the California State Capitol to the Golden Gate Bridge to the front door of KPFA. And I also want to say that uh, he brought in these pictures that are hanging, the one over there that says the war is over. And um, he might explain that to you a little bit. And um, he brought in a couple of pictures of Phil also that are around here. So thanks a lot for bringing those as well. Carl, you around? Right here. Right here, okay. That uh, War is Over poster there uh, was designed by Phil, and uh, that's one of the originals that was put on the streets of New York City in 1975. Uh, it's really Phil's last major uh, undertaking was the organizing of the War is Over route. And there are quite a number of people there. Uh, he sang uh, There Was a Fortune with Joe Baez. And uh, it was in Central Park in New York. And uh, I, I just love that poster. I've had it a long time. It's, uh, I'm going to cherish it. There it is, Phil. Phil lives. So here's a song that Phil wrote about the, uh, uh, he always introduced it as uh, about uh, American paranoia. Can you hear the guitar at all? I'm not hearing any monitor. Walking down the highway with his big boots on and his big thumb and how he wants to get it. He wants to hurt me. He wants to bring me down. Oh, but sometime later, when I feel a little straighter, I will come across a stranger who remind me of the teacher and then I'll run him over. Pretty star on the line of the park, find my way in the dark. I can see her coming, she sure looks pretty, and her breasts are bold, and her mouth is large. She wants to get me, she wants to hurt me, she wants to bring me down. Oh, but sometime later, when I feel a little naked, I will lead her to the altar and I'll tie her on the leather. And then I'm going to win her. Chinese, and they spread to see they want to get me. 
your name. Among us you save us youths from fighting the good fight we always lose. Our lives and our spirits, even our good names, like when fellows killed our thoughts on the tree. Now who on earth such a hero? No, it's not. But uh, switching gears, Phil uh, wrote one of his very earliest, uh, one of his very earliest topical songs it was about the American Medical Association. Phil saw that um, even in the days when he was, even in the days when there was still compassion in healthcare, when the doctors made health calls. When was that? Back in the 60s, it's true. I, I remember health calls, some older. Uh, but uh, it's only gotten worse since then. But he was always he always had his finger on the pulse, and he saw that the AMA, the American uh, Medical Association, uh, advocated a lot for the AMA. What's interesting is that they still have an outside influence over our uh, policy. Uh, in Phil's day, seventy five percent of doctors belong to the AMA. Uh, can you guess what percentage these days belong to the AMA? Fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. But uh, they still, uh, they're still very important in policy making, uh, making, uh, supporting bills like SB 277, which I've been fighting for. Uh, anyway, the AMA song by Philip. Oh, we are the nation's physician. We give aid to our lobbies every day. We will fight against disease when the money comes to eat. And when we get together and we say, Hooray for the AMA. And for us, doctors, let's have higher pay. If you can't afford my bill, don't you tell me that to run. Because that's a free and a problem. We've divided up the sections of the body. Every day we're specializing more and more. But we really love to stitch the teeth of the rich. We're sure there is a clinic for the poor. Hooray for the day and the And for us, doctor, but to hire me. If you can't afford my bill, don't you tell me that to real. Cause that's the brief and the false way. And our waiting rooms are getting very crowded. It's sad to see the patients sit in me. But if you must use our ointment, then you must have an appointment for a whole day for the magazine to read. Hooray for the AMA. And for us doctors, let's have higher pay. If you can't afford my bill, don't you tell me that you're ill. Cause that's the free and false way. Now the government is getting too efficient. Their socialism is really causing harm. Now it was hypocritic, but with money we're fanatic. So it's 25 more vaccines in your arms. Hooray for the AMA. And for us doctors, let's have higher pay. If you can't afford my bill, don't you tell me that you're real. Cause that's the free enterprise. That's the American. That's the old commentary way. Malgamated AMA.
car later because he will be a sin. Next up is my good buddy Jimmy Kelly. We just went to see Trumbo with Carol and him and um, my good friend Andy, partner Andy. Anyway, uh, Jimmy Kelly is the Labor Studies Coordinator for San Jose City College, as well as the co-founder of the Real Work, R-E-E-L, or Labor Film Festival. Jimmy founded the Western Workers Labor Festival, which has been going for 30 years now. This will be in 2016, that will be the 40th year. He is a member of the Teachers and Letters Carriers Union, and he's the co-founder of San Leandro for Bernie. So, Hi. Hi. I'm a union activist. I'm going to do a uh, Build a Burn song tonight. Uh, we're going to do a, a union song, and uh, we're going to do a theme song, and we're going to do a holiday what? song. The ironic comic Bill Oates. Uh, when I was 18, he was, did a song called Draft Dodger Rag. So if you know, it's a sing along. Well, I'm just a typical boy from typical American town. I believe in God and Senator Dodd and keeping all Castro down. And when it came my time to serve, I knew that it was in red. But when I got to my old draft board, buddy, this is what I said. Signs of only 18, got a righteous knee, and I always carry a purse. I got eyes like a cat, my feet are flat. My hat but dead ain't worse. Oh, and think of my career, my sweet idea, my poor old little demands. Sound ain't no fool, I'm going to school. I'm working in a deep ass land. Got a dissipated disc and a racked up back, and I'm going to take a fire with the bugs. And when the bombshell hits again, that one I think fits, and I'm addicted to the style of drugs. I got the weakness for oh, the can't touch my toes again. Man, it's just my knee. And if the enemy came close to me, I probably start to see signs of only 18 times I'm just me. I always carry a purse. Got eyes like a bat, my feet are black. And the day worse. So it's taking my career, my sweet heart dear, my poor little demand. That ain't no fool, I'm going slow. And working in a deep end plan. I hate Troy and Lai, and I hope he dies, but one thing you gotta see, that someone's gonna go over there, and that someone is a thief. So I wish you well, start giving hell, and kill them a thousand or so. And you ever get a war without blood in your I'll be the first to go. Well, I'm only 18, got a rupture and clean, I always carry a purse. I got eyes like that, my feet are flat, as the day works. And think of my career, my feet are dear, my poor little hands. Sunday, go to school, I'm going to school, working in a deep ass plan. I think there's 13 ways to get out of the army right there. <laughs> I played the most important Labor Heritage Festival 29 years ago. It's about labor and civil rights, and uh, this is a song that's a little bit about labor with a typically Bill Oaks match to it. Well, come you rights labor, come you union car, and DAP, remember the struggles of before when you were standing helpless on the outside of the door. And you started building wings on the chain, on the chain, and you started building wings on the chain. When ponies on the horses were waiting on the man, riding through the strike with the pistols in their hands, trying to fill the skulls of many women and men. As you build it, started building wings on the chain, on the chain. As you started building wings on the chain. Well, the army of the fascists tried to put you on the run. Well, the army of the union, well, they did what would be done. And the power of the factory was greater than the gun. 
And he built one more thing on the chain, on the chain. And he built one more thing on the chain. Late 1954, decisions finally made. The black man was rising fast and racing from the shade. And the union took the stand, and your union was betrayed. And you lost yourself a link on the chain, on the chain. And you lost yourself a link on the chain. And then there came the boycotts and tender green and rice. Forgetting what you stood for, you tried to break the time. And the automation bosses were just laughing at the time. And they watch you lose your link on the chain, on the chain. And they watch you lose your link on the chain. Well, you know when they block your trucks, boys, by standing on the road. That all that they were doing is that all they do that show. That you gotta fight, you gotta strike, to get what you are owed. When you're building all your things on the chain, on the chain. When you're building all your things on the chain. And the man inside to tell you what they'll take your job away. <laughs> That's the same man who was scamming hard just the other day. And the union's not a union till he's thrown out of the way. And he's choking on your link on the chain, on the chain. And he's choking on your link on the chain. And now the times are telling you that times are losing on. You're fighting for the same things, the jobs that will be gone. But don't you dare to ask you, Lord, which side are you on? When you start building your link on the chain, on the chain. When you start building your link on the chain. And now for something very different. Here's a sister song by Trillo, who you probably will hear over and over and over and over again. <laughs> now they don't have Christmas in Kentucky. There's no holly on West Virginia door. For the trees don't twinkle when you're hungry. And jingle bells don't jingle when you're poor. Christmas shopper shopping on the neon city street. Another Christmas dollar for another Christmas tree. There's satin on pretty dolls that make the children glow. While boy is walking ragged in a cold Kentucky snow. No, they don't have Christmas in Kentucky. There's no holly on a West Virginia door. And the trees don't twinkle when you're hungry. And jingle bells don't jingle when you're poor. There's a lot of toys for children when Christmas time is near. But the present for the miners is a stocking full of fear. In the dark hills of Kentucky, there's one gift that may be found. It's a cold us of forgotten days that's lying on the ground. Sing it out. They don't have Christmas in Kentucky. There's no holly on a West Virginia door. For the trees don't wake when you're hungry. And jingle bells don't jingle when you're poor. Let's drink a toast to Congress and a toast to Santa Claus. And a toast to all the speeches that ring with loud applause. There's not enough to give and there's not enough to share. So drown the sounds of sorrow with a hearty Christmas cheer. Sing it out. They don't have Christmas in Kentucky. There's no holly on a West Virginia door. 
For the streams all twinkle when you're hungry, and jingle bells all twinkle when you're poor. Have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy New Year's Day, for now's the time of plenty and there's plenty here to stay. But if you know what Christmas was, I think that you would find that Christ is spending Christmas in a cold Kentucky mine. No, they don't have Christmas in Kentucky. There's no holly on West Virginia door. For the trees don't twinkle when you're hungry. And jingle bells don't jingle when you're poor. And now it's Western Workers. Oh, yeah. what about it? That is happening. Western it's Workers, happening. the 29th uh, Western Workers will be next January 15th. That's the 29th. Year. Uh, year 30th is the 30th time. We'll be at uh, Martin Luther King weekend, and maybe the last time. Yeah. I don't know. January 16th, 17th. The actual birthday. Yeah, we'll be on January 16th, 17th, 18th in Burlingame at the Plumbers and Steam Fitters Union on Rollins Road. So uh, you can find out more information about Western Workers by just Googling Western Workers Labor Heritage Festival and it will come up. And I, while Jimmy was mentioning that there were uh, albums and things of Phil Oaks to see over there, there are also a few um, albums and products of some of the people who are here tonight, and I have my end of the year letter I usually send out emailing to most people, but if you haven't gotten it, you're welcome to just take one. And next up is Clyde Leland. Clyde is also, we have we have a uh, an open mic here at the Unitarian every second Friday of the month, and the, uh, and Clyde is one of the rotating MCs, as is uh, Vic and a few other people in this room. Too. There you go, he's rotating as we, as we speak. Anyway, uh, Clyde has lived in the Bay Area pretty much his whole life. He serves on the board of directors of the Freight and Salvage Coffee House in Berkeley and is a founding member of the longest running men's group in the Bay Area. His songs have won awards from the West Coast Songwriters Association and wild acclaim from his friends and family. Here, and he's a little folkies teacher singing for preschool kids. And uh, he has some stuff on YouTube and Folk Alley. And he's being joined with by Richard McNeil. Uh, play Rosero. Yay! It's a song off of. Uh, Bill's concert album he wrote it a couple years before that. The Rosero program actually ended legally in 1964. It started uh, basically when the United States entered the war, agricultural concerns were concerned that they were losing their field workers um, because apparently even going to war was preferable to working in the fields. And so they set up this program and there was an agreement between the federal governments of the United States and Mexico that these Mexican men, for the most part, could come into the United States on labor contracts. They were called contracts, but they were basically slaves working there because as if they weren't working, they had to leave, and they were forced to leave. And they lived in houses that were provided for them by the growers, but the growers would then charge them rent for the houses and deduct that rent from their wages. Um, the program ended in 1964, as I said, but it had done its damage. It had basically destroyed wages for field workers in the United States, and they have stayed that way ever since. <laughs> Wade into the river, 
Through the rippling shallow water, steal across the glitzy blood of Rosero. Come bring your hungry body to the golden fields of plenty, from a peso to a penny of Rosero. Welcome to California, where the friendly farmer will take us. Come lay before your mother, your father, and your brother. Your sister and your mother, Priscilla. Come pick the fruit of yellow, pull the flower from the berry. Purple fruit will fill your belly, Priscilla. Welcome. To California, where the friendly farmer will take care of us. And the sun will bite your body, and the dust will draw you thirsty, while your muscles make your mercy. In the shade of your sombrero, drop your sweat upon the soil. Like the fruit, your youth and spoil. Rosero. Oh, welcome to California. Where the friendly farm will take care
have all of these spilled tomatoes in the room. Maybe you could help me, Richard, out. What is the crooked column? And in fact, I have seen the lyrics both, don't forget your crooked collar, and the other lyrics were, and forget your crooked collar. Like the crooked collar, is it clear whether it's something you wore as a farm worker, or if he was comparing them to, I don't know, field animals maybe? Or it, it was a, or it was a farm arrest maybe? Any, anybody know? Well, when you have a sack on your back, when you wear one of those sacks, uh -huh. like you're going through, that's kind of like a So you're right? picking it and putting stuff in the sack. No, the sack goes right on your And it goes around. Neck. It's kind of like a collar. It's kind of like my guitar strap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. making my collar. I don't know if that's what it is, but it's crossed, too. Uh-huh. Well, maybe that's it. No, um, that's, it's all good. That's theory. Myth. Um. Bill wrote a lot of songs where he tried to put himself in other people's shoes and sing about them and sing about what it meant to be that person. Sometimes seriously, sometimes satirically. Um, this is a song in, that I wrote in that spirit. I wrote it four years ago. And actually, four years ago, like this kind of time, presidential election-wise, there were debates going on. Um, and I felt opposed, let us say, to some of the people who were supporting some of the Republican candidates and thought, if I wrote a song where I sort of put myself in their position, perhaps um, I would heal our nation. <laughs> You say you're a reporter with your notebook in your hand. I'm what you call the heartland. Here is where I stand. I'm small town family value to a Main Street kind of guy. Don't go to college. It's all they do is lie. I get the truth at church on Sunday and down on my front street. I wave and wear the flag. I support the troops and I think we should love our country more when there is a war. And here is why I think that I'm a moron. I'm a moron. And I don't want to understand. I'm a moron. I'm a big Russian pop fan, so when you're done with your questions, here's what you should know. Right now that I'm a moron, I vote. I've got me to work in seven days, and I would never doubt it. Keep kids off the sex and drug, don't tell them about it. Build a wall along the border, so I you see yours. And I'll defend my marriage by attacking yours. I'm a moron. The USA, we're number one. I'm a moron. And you'll never get my gun if I don't like what I feel. I pick up the gun. I'm proud to be a moron. We got a drill right here, right now, we're holding for on me. Some people say it's not safe. I hear they're all cooped with all their education. What I'd like to know if it's really getting warmer. I love it still. I'm a moron. Safety rules, they hold us back. I'm a moron. So don't confuse me with the facts. You will never change my mind with something no chunky wrote. I'm proud to be a moron. I'm a moron. And I don't understand. I'm a moron. I'm a big 
us the top man. So when you're done with your questions, here's what you should know. Right now that I'm a born from Chicago, yes, I'm proud to be a born from Chicago. here in Berkeley uh, University near California um, called The Art of the Protest Song. I'll be playing in that with four other people and we'll be talking about what makes a protest song a protest song and singing a whole lot of protest songs that, that if you come you will sing along with us. Yeah. Thank you very much. There, there's some information about it on the table in the back. <laughs> Thank you, Clyde. I'm going to turn the MC over to Carl. Um. Well, we continue on here. I'm Carl Pascal, and uh, I'll be MC the last portion of the evening of the 75th anniversary Philo's celebration. Um, Vic says we're not going to sing Happy Birthday to Philo's because it's such a terrible song. It is. Yeah, I wonder. So. <laughs> So if anybody has a, another idea, an appropriate song, or maybe he recalls a song that Phil did. Um, but our next artist, um, I was a little confused because I saw an H before your name. Uh, does, that, does that mean anything? Yeah, or not in Somewhere else. Okay. All right. But you go by Nicole Anderson. And Nicole Anderson uh, started her singing songwriting career working cafes and years in the late 70s Baltimore. There's a Baltimore connection again. Um, Richard Oates was from Baltimore. Shuba. 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 And here she is. Nicole Anderson. Yeah, I started out this I to play the guitar and I got $15 a night to play in this Peabody Beer Stuba where people that, you know, not pleasure, people like uh, supposedly F. F. Scott Fitzgerald used to hang out. That's what I meant to And. Yeah, I I was telling the other day, who was very gracious to let me get in on this, that the hardest thing about this was getting my calluses back and I'm trying to remember the lyrics because I've been writing plays lately. And I'm finishing off a uh, musical called Spot Until the Left. Change. 
All the senators and congressmen, please heed the call. Don't stand in the hallways on Black Lives Hall. But a hero's fault, it's the hero's fault. There's a battle outside that's raging. It was to shake your windows and rattle your walls, cause the times they are changing. From mothers and fathers throughout the land. And don't criticize what you can't understand. Our sons and our daughters are beyond our command. That old road is rapidly aging. Gotta get out a new one if you can take a stand. Cause the times, they are changing. The curse it is cast. The slow one now will really be fast. As the first one now will really be last. The order is rapidly fading. And the first one now will then all be last. So the times. They are changing. I saw Joey the last night, alive as you and me, says I am a joke, for ten years dead, I never died says he, I never died says he, not the bosses that killed you Joe. Shot you, Joe, says I. It's more than guns to kill a man, says Joe. More than guns, says Joe. I didn't die. In Salt Lake City, Joe, says I. In standing by my bed, they bring you on, they 
almost all of the time. Na 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 na
question authority. That's what Phil did. Here he is, Francis Collins. Yeah. 
tax. And we don't give a damn if you're an heir of more tax. Just take off your clothes and lie down on your back. Thank you. 
or a Phil Eggs song. Phil, great experience. Thank you, Molly. Oh yeah, thanks Cheryl and Victor in the kitchen. Thanks to Gail Penso. Thanks to Cynthia Papermaster. Thanks so very, very much to Books to Go. This everybody is Books to Go, who is the driving force behind this event. We are on a new film, we're actually teaching the new film for the week in the apartment, actually, and uh, what can you say? This is Victor on the broadside ballot before all the time. You know, did you? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, he was I great. Imagine. He was great to come and hang out with um, But uh, we did have a girlfriend in the apartment. Sure. <laughs> but, uh, we had a great week in Washington. It was very short term. There was no way we were going to decline. Anyway, here's, here's the song I've been doing this, just saying I have a menu for a little bit. And it's a, um, not that well known song by Phil Oaks, it's called Measured Fruit. It's about Guatemala, the Ardennes, the Red Road, about Cuba, all that's in this song. Oh, I got some bragging rights. The woman who set up the, the uh, website, celebratingphiloaks.com, Y'all, y'all go visit that, please. Celebrating, and name's Shannon Hammond, and she has the Ben Spark Club, and like the uh, contact of people all over the place. And they had a, a one in Madrid, Liverpool. So this this happened all over the place. A couple of people. Brooklyn. Yeah. Queens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. In Chicago. Yeah. Lady Heller's doing the land. What's the website again? Celebratingphilos.com. Go there, and then I want to tell you all about it. She also put out a CD. She called for artists, uh-huh. and I got this song here. So oh, good. Thank you also mentioned another website way early on in the beginning. What was that one? Um, no more songs. No more, no more songs. songs is the memorabilia tribute to say. No more no songs. No more songs, songs is Phillips there. Not yet. So, yeah, dot com. So let's do this uh,
is now I can say that I'm gone Let us not sit past me now For we must be moving on Is there anybody home Is there anybody here To get you to do what I gotta do Try to stop the pain. 
But Monopoly is so much fun, I'd hate to close the game. And I'm sure it would be interesting. Anybody outside of a small circle of friends, sweating in the ghetto with the colored and the poor. The rats have joined the babies who are sleeping on the floor. Wouldn't it be a riot if they really included tops? But they got too much already and decided to got the cops. And I'm sure that would be different. Anybody outside the small circle of friends. Smoking marijuana is more fun than drinking beer. But a friend of ours got captured and they gave him 30 years. Maybe we should bring the voices and ask somebody why. Demonstrations are a giant, the signs are much too high. And I'm sure it would be different. Anybody? Outside a small circle of friends. Look outside the window, the cops are taking someone's life. Was a crazy man had threatened them with an old gold butter knife. Maybe we should testify, bring justice to this case. But he don't look like our brother, and the sign is not our place. And I'm sure it would be in this. Everybody outside the small circle of friends. Nice guys make you felt in every sleep room and the swarm. The rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poor. Maybe we should demonstrate put millions on the street. But it's cold outside, we're tired too, so I guess we'll kind of tweet. And I'm not sure that it would be different. Anybody outside the small circle of free. In this first city, terror, 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 yes, the system starts to cry. Just give up your rights if you've got nothing to hide. Maybe we should keep our rights as we keep them down the line. But we gave up all our privacy, but well, the shopping sure is fine. And I'm sure it would be dangerous. Anybody outside the small circle of friends.
So they decide to turn into birds, to turn into green birds. And they uh, agree that when there's been a consciousness transformation on Earth, then they will come back into human form and be together. And I was just thinking of this as kind of a comfort zone for the Holy Spirit, too, that, that we're living in a consciousness transformation and that, that his, his spirit can, can be free, too.
Thank you, everybody, for coming. That was a total song. 